Top 7 Monsters of Lovecraft Country Explored Lovecraft Country was a unique horror series that stirred up the interest of Lovecraft fans with familiar references. The plot has little to do with his works and is actually based on Matt Ruff's novel from 2016. However, the narrative is premised in a world that is full of the notorious Lovecraftian monsters. The protagonist, Atticus Freeman, is a black man who embarks on a grand adventure, along with his friend Letitia and Uncle George. His journey takes him through some dreadful Lovecraftian monsters, Jim Crow era laws, and several other hindrances. Their mission is to stop the evil Christina Braithwaite from becoming immortal and fulfilling her sinister plans. As we said, the story has little to do with Lovecraft, but you will notice a mild inspiration from some of his famous works and some rare ones. Unfortunately, the show got cancelled from a want of viewers, and showrunner Misha Green suggested that it could have continued with more viewers. The second season was supposed to be called Lovecraft Country Supremacy, and with all the Emmy nominations, it's a shame that the show couldn't continue. In this video, we will take a quick look at some of the craziest monsters that are featured in this series. If you want to know more about Lovecraft, you can check out our video, the link of which is given in the description box. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Number 1. The Shogoth Lovecraft Country started with a bang, thanks to the mention of an epic monster right in the series premiere, titled Sundown. This was when they introduced Shogoths, one of the strangest and most intimidating Lovecraftian monsters. It started when Atticus, the teacher, and George were on a mission to find Atticus's father. During their travels, they chance upon a less explored part of the woods that is somewhat vague on the map as well. Atticus, who is well versed with Lovecraftian stories and various folklore, tells Letitia about the horrifying Shogoths. What was that? It's a shaga. But they have no idea that the same monster will come to prey on them in the dark. The appearance of Shogos was similar to the ones we saw in the story at the Mountains of Madness. We see them as creatures with multiple eyes and deadly sharp fangs. They don't exactly have a stable shape and can look like giant amoeba that can grow arms and limbs as per requirement. They make a dreadful sound that is equivalent to the evil version of the innocent chattering of birds. <laughs> These monsters have a few similarities with vampires, and their operations are somewhat alike, as mentioned by George. There is a scene where a police officer is bitten by a shogoth and transforms into one. It was not only a quick transformation, but also very painful. Just like the werewolves or vampires, the shogoths don't do so well in light or fire, and it becomes a crucial feature that helps Atticus and his friends escape. The indirect reference to the lore of the Jim Crow era where black people were not allowed to roam around after dark is hard to miss. This is certainly one of the mightiest beasts conceptualized, and the features can be quite spooky, even for the bravest of souls. Number 2. The Kamiho When we think of monsters, a fox is hardly a creature that comes to mind. However, the dark history of the Kamiho will change your mind. The reference to this mythical beast can be found in the sixth episode of Lovecraft Country titled Meet Me in Daegu. It explores the dark side of Korean mythology and we find mention of Kamiho and Mudang. The protagonist, Atticus, is stationed in Korea during a military stint around the late 1940s, and the monster is synced into the plot with perfect ease. This episode was also very important because we got to see the true colours of Gia. On the surface, she was a caring and nurturing nursing student who is working with the soldiers during their fight against a communist regime. We soon learn that she's actually a Kamiho and is on a mission to take a hundred souls. A Kamiho is nothing but a fox that has lived over thousands of years and it's developed nine tails as such. This fox is capable of transforming into a beautiful woman and uses this disguise to prey on unsuspecting men. They seduce their prey and take their heart, and in this storyline, we see Gia slaughter one of her victims while having sex. During this, her nine tails appear briefly as she tears her prey to shreds. 
The climax of the episode, however, has a twist in store for you in the form of Jia's mother. We get to know a little about Mudang, who is basically a female shaman capable of summoning mythical monsters like the Kamiho. It's revealed that the Kamiho was summoned by the Mudang to get revenge for the real Jia, and her beauty was used to get the souls of evil men. The plan was chalked out after Jia's mother saw her daughter getting brutally assaulted by some men, and this ritual would take Jia back to her. Kamiho also finds mention in Chinese and Japanese mythologies, and in each case, it's seen as an omen that brings death. Even in this episode, it has a deep impact on Atticus's life. Number 3. Cthulhu the Cthulhu is the most famous among all the fictional monsters in the Lovecraft universe, and it would be a shame if Lovecraft Country didn't use the mythical beast. The first mention of Cthulhu can be found in Lovecraft's short story titled The Call of Cthulhu, and since then this creature has been popularised in every way imaginable. The monstrous Cthulhu is one of his most extravagant imaginations that were rooted in the severely disturbing nightmares that Lovecraft had. It had a pulpy tentacle head and a scaly, grotesque body that resembled something similar to a mix of an octopus, a dragon, and a human. With claws, wings, and a rubbery body, this creature was as disgusting as it was scary. The Cthulhu lives in the uncharted waters of the South Pacific, near the city of Erlier. Lovecraft uses it so frequently that a Cthulhu mythos has taken shape over the years. This elder god has a brief appearance in the series, and Atticus has a vision of this monster during a bus journey to Chicago. He feels that the ancient, gigantic monster is headed towards him, and the only way to get the better of it would be to master the powers within himself. The small appearance is still enough to portray his invincibility. When Jackie Robinson slices through its body with his baseball bat, the wound is healed in moments and the restoration takes only seconds. This invincible monster was one of the nightmarish creations of Lovecraft, and it's nice to watch a modern take on that. Number 4. Deja Thoris our protagonist Atticus Finch was a soldier with the American army, and came across a strange lady while moving through the trenches during the war. This ethereal figure appeared in a maze of neon green lights, and is actually a reference to a sci-fi novel titled A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. His collection of stories featured a crucial character named Deja Thoris, who was a princess with red skin. These stories try to look into how life could be on Mars, and Deja was a love interest of John Carter, who was a Confederate soldier. This was controversial, because the world he imagined on Mars was not devoid of racial division, and even the author created a hierarchy of skin colour among the aliens. For example, red was the most royal and respected colour that was exclusive to the dominant personnel on the planet Barsoom. If the reference isn't obvious to you, look carefully at the book that Atticus is holding, and it is none but a princess of Mars. Deja Thoris has been a part of folklore for ages, and she is portrayed as an alluring beauty. This ravishing diva, however, is not some damsel in distress like she is often portrayed. She can be quite a tough person when the situation demands of her. She has been shown to be capable enough to survive on Mars on her own. Her beauty is unparalleled, and she has the most stunning features. She has reappeared in several versions of the series and also in a few films and comics. Number 5. Yehima Not all monsters are evil, and Yehima Marakoti most certainly isn't. She was an Arawakan woman who was tricked by the evil Titus Braithwaite who was a cruel slave owner. He was keen on translating the language of Adam and in his desperation to do so, he coaxed Yehima to help him. Once Yehima got a hint of his true colours, she refused to read any further, but Titus promised to reunite her with her own people. However, after the job was done, he killed her and imprisoned her in a vault where she remained for over a century. Yehima Marakoti was a two-spirited person, and was first awakened by Tick, Montrose and Letty after being trapped for a very long time. When Tick asked for help, she didn't trust him enough, given what had happened to her previously. Yehima was rather naive, and that probably brought about her downfall in the end. When Montrose caused the vault to be flooded, Yehima escapes with them in the elevator and screams in a high-pitched voice. <laughs> This is where Montrose suspects that Titus might have turned her into a siren, and this meant that she wouldn't be able to speak even if she escaped the vault. 
Montrose then sneaks up on her and cuts her throat to put an end to her misery. We loved how Yahima was made to look with her long dark hair and hypnotic brown eyes. She had the breasts of a woman and both male and female genitalia that were side by side. We loved the mysterious aura that surrounded this strange creature. Number six, ghosts. Ghosts have the simplest of representation in Lovecraft Country. They're presented just as you would imagine. They are simply the spirits of deceased individuals who have not yet moved into the afterlife. The ghosts can appear as visible manifestations to the living, and they are often restricted by their condition of death. For instance, they could be geographically bound to a particular place, and more often than not, it's the place of their deaths. Plenty of ghosts were seen in the early days of the show, and they have the same old conventional characteristics that we know them for. These beings are intangible, and thus you cannot physically feel them unless they choose to be felt. They are visible at times, but they can also choose to be invisible. The ghosts seem to have some form of teleportation abilities, because they disappear all of a sudden and reappear at a different place. These spooky creatures have stirred up numerous paranormal tales, and we love their portrayal in Lovecraft Country as well. Did you see that? See what? Number 7, Topsy and Bopsy. The eighth episode, titled Jigabobo, reveals two other dreaded monsters, as we see the character of Diana being pursued by malevolent beings. It all starts when she runs away to see the body of her deceased friend and is left without any adult supervision. With no one to protect her, she is cursed by Captain Lancaster. <laughs> Since then, she has visions of creatures that pursue her, but only she can see them. Thus, she can neither tell anyone about this, nor can she find a remedy to get rid of her pursuers. These creatures take the form of Topsy and Bopsy, and torment her for much of the episode. Do these names ring a bell for you? If they do, that's because you read about them in Uncle Tom's Cabin, where Topsy is a minor character with a great cultural impact. She's an eight-year-old black girl in the book and is shown as a mischievous and adorable little girl. However, the show has a very different image for her as Bopsy and Topsy exhibit mind-blowingly frightening appearances. They have extremely wide mouths, where an evil smile is carved out to expose the sharp irregular teeth. Their glowing eyes, animalistic movement, and the fearsome growth of their nails into talons make them a perfect antagonist for a horror show. Diana lost her best friend to racial violence, and it can well be the case that the fear and trauma influenced her severely into having these visions. Whatever be the case, Topsy and Bopsy have undeniably proven to be among the scariest entities seen on this show. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe.